Hey everybody, Eric here. Today, we're going beyond SketchUp Desktop to spend a little bit of time in layout so that I can show you two great features of the Scaled Drawing Tool. So if you're not familiar with Drawing to Scale, it's probably because most of you, like me, spend most of their time in SketchUp. And SketchUp actually draws in real-world dimensions. So what that means is that if you're in Imperial units like me, it's one foot equals one foot. So if you're drawing, you enter one foot, uh, then it'll draw something at one foot. That's real world dimensions. Same thing if you're metric units, it's meters, millimeters, whatever. But when you transfer to a drawing set or a document set, we're no longer drawing in real world dimensions, we're drawing to scale. That's because the drawings need to fit on a piece of paper. So that's why we invented drawing scales to begin with. So in layout, there's two different ways to do it. We can either start in SketchUp and then set a scale and go to layout, or we can actually just start drawing from scratch using the scaled drawing tool. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at both ways, uh, but let's just go ahead and get to it. So here I am. I'm in a blank layout file. It's 11 by 17. And what I want to do is draw what maybe is the start of a construction detail. Now, I do have a 3D model, but I'm going to come back to that in a second. So let's just pretend like I don't. Uh, just so that I have something to reference, if you're wondering construction detail, what does that mean? I, this is a concrete seat wall that maybe is part of a park design that I'm working on. So what I want to do is draw something like a section cut through this wall that's going to help communicate to either a builder or a contractor or someone who I might get a price quote for basically how to construct this wall. So if you're not familiar with the scale drawing uh, tool or palette, it's over here. And if you don't see it by default, then you may have to enable it. Some of these might be turned off uh, by default. So in this case, I'm going to pull this. I'm going to undock this just so it's a little bit easier to see. So let me explain first by not drawing to scale. Uh, this seat wall here, I don't know how high it is, but typically they're going to be between 18 and 24 inches. So let's just say 20 and split the difference. In this case, if I start drawing and I enter 20 inches, you can see that because it's an 11 by 17 size page, uh, I'm drawing way off of my page. That does not work. That's how I would draw it if I was starting in SketchUp. So in layout, we're going to kind of do it different. We're going to say make scale drawing first before we start drawing. And what it's going to do, it's going to ask me to choose a scale. You can see it's telling me right here, choose a scale. So this might be a little bit difficult to know what scale if you're not, if you don't have a lot of experience drawing construction details, or depending on what sheet size your final drawing set might be, it may be difficult to know. What I would say is don't worry about it, pick one, and then you can always change it later. So I, I kind of already know that on an 11 by 17 sheet set that a seat wall is going to look okay at this scale, which is one half inch, one and one half inch equals one foot. So let's just start with that. So now I'm going to use that line tool again. You can see it's telling me what to do. Click to start drawing at this scale. So it doesn't really matter where because I can always move it, but I'm going to now enter the same 20 inches. If you look at the bottom right of my screen where the measurements box is in SketchUp, it's entering it in as 20, and I'm going to hit enter or return, and there it is. Now in this case, uh, you can see there's a little bit of a taper to this, so I'm going to come over here and say 10. I'm just guessing because, you know, this is... I'm just kind of seeing what this image uh, looks like. And then what I want to do is maybe come up to the top and come over to 20 inches again. Now, if I wanted to check something like, I don't know, zoom in, or if I switched uh, back to SketchUp or something like that, if I pop out of the scaled drawing tool, you'll notice that I'm no longer in that. I'm outside of it. So if I wanted to draw something like maybe where this shrub a uh, grass bed lies, let's say 18 inches, so two inches below the concrete surface. And I come over here and I say 18 inches. Well, I have the same problem that happened just before. I'm drawing outside of the scaled drawing sort of box or window. So I need to be careful if I do pop out of the scaled drawing for whatever reason, if I want to continue drawing, I need to pop back in. So you can see it's a little bit like a component in SketchUp is that everything fades. So this whole everything fades back, and then the little scale bar and this little dotted line, uh, the little scale text pops up. So in this case, I come back down here, go 18 inches, and that's going to tell me where my grass is. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And while I'm at it, uh, no, actually, I'm going to come back. I'm going to do the patterns in just a second. 
So I do need to do, let's see, I need to connect these dots. I'm going to switch using the keyboard shortcuts to my split tool, which is the knife. And then I could draw an arc, or I could use the line tool again, which is kind of fun. And then if I wanted a round an edge, I just hold, click and hold. And then I'm just going to kind of pull that. And I'm just eyeballing it here at this point because I don't really have you know, an exact measurement that I want to go for, that I'm trying to aim for. So while I'm still in here, I'm going to, because it's a construction detail, might be kind of fun to select this, just kind of make it look a little bit more realistic. I'm going to go pattern, stroke, fill off, pattern. I'm not sure which one I want. Tonal patterns, probably not. Site patterns, no. See, I don't spend a ton of time with patterns, but I'm going to pick this one for now. I, I think that kind of represents typically um, what you would see if you were doing a CAD detail for something like soil or what happens under the ground. So let's go with that. That's good. So here you can see it, everything looks good. I would could continue to add patterns and fills if I wanted to. If I wanted to give this a concrete one, I could do that. I'm not going to. I think this is okay for right now. And as far as the scale on the page, if I find that this is taking up too much room or not enough, I can just come over here and change the scale at any time. So one inch equals one foot. It's going to make it smaller. I want to go the other way around. Three inch equals one foot. It's going to make it much bigger. It's a little bit too big. I actually feel like maybe I like the scale that it was before. So again, if you're not sure what scale it is, pick a scale, draw it. You can always change it once you have more information. And just to kind of round this off or finish this off, I'm going to add some text. And I'm just going to say what this is. Concrete, seat, wall. And the scale is one and one half inch equals one foot zero inches. That way I feel like I feel like that one's ready to go. It needs a little bit more embellishment, but for the most part, it's it's good to go. So now I said I was going to do this two ways. That was the way where we can start drawing to scale with nothing, basically a blank drawing. And I just I kind of know what I want in my head, or I have some dimensions that I pulled from an as-built or something like that, or was given from an engineer. So that's great. But let's just say for sake of argument, if I switch for one moment, that I do actually have um, a design for the seawall. So in this case, if I have one in SketchUp and I want to make a construction detail of it, let's use that. Let's not redraw from scratch if we don't have to. So I want to make sure that I've saved a scene. Um, in this case, uh, maybe I'll call this elevation or front view or construction detail, anything that's going to help me remember that this is the view this is sort of the section cut view that I want to use. So I'm looking at this front side. So I'm going to make sure to save that. I'm going to switch back over to layout. And I'm going to pull that drawing. Here it is right here. That's the SketchUp drawing. I'm just going to pull it in and drop it right onto my sheet set. And I've got this drawing here. Now this is where sometimes it might be easier to draw it from scratch. You can see how quick that was. In this case, I have to do a few things. I have to come over here to my SketchUp model. I would like to make that vector so that I have nice editable vector lines and knock out that background. I would also like to make sure that there's no background. So I'm going to double check that in my style menu. And I will want to crop off as much as I like Heather and Lily. Um, I'm going to preserve the scale and I'm going to crop them out. So what I want to do is just sort of get just the wall into that. Now, this is the trick here. I can. This is where it gets kind of interesting. I'm going to go ahead and set that same scale, which is the one and one half inch equals one foot. Probably should have done that before I adjusted my, my viewport, but that's OK. You know, we learn as we go. Now, this is where you've got a couple of choices. You could say, hey, that's good enough for construction detail. Or you might say, no, I actually want to add some pattern fills, and I want to change the strokes, and I want to make it look more like a CAD drawing. Well, I'm going to come over here, and I'm just going to say, explode. So I'm going to explode the model. And when I explode it, what happens here, I'm going to undo that step because you can see what happens is that I actually want to change the style to my hidden line style. I don't want the fill. I don't want the faces to explode. I want just the lines in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and switch it to hidden line style, which is saved in my drawing template. And now this should work better. Explode. And there we go. I have just the lines at the same scale can see if I drag and sort of set this over here, it's exactly the same as the drawing that I just made up. Only I know that this is, 
I don't know if I'd say this is more accurate, but at least it represents exactly what's in my SketchUp model. So there's no chance for error or deviation. I'm just gonna pop this over to finish this off, beef up my line weights. And then if I wanted to go in there, and if I wanted to switch to my line tool for whatever reason, let's see, switch to my line tool, come up over here because I'm a scaled drawing, I can come up 18 inches. Um, or it doesn't really matter because it's the soil levels really sort of varies anyway in real life. It doesn't have to be fixed. So there we go. There's my soil level. There's my construction detail that came from SketchUp. So I'm going to, I think that's pretty much it. So I said that we were going to look at scaled drawing two ways. One way starting from scratch and one way actually going the opposite, which is taking a SketchUp model, exploding it, and then when we explode it, it becomes a scaled drawing. But either way, once it becomes a scaled drawing, it doesn't really matter if it came from SketchUp or if it's something you drew from scratch, or even if it came from CAD. Uh, the point is, is that they all work the same, and the scaled drawing tool is just a great way to either stack viewports or do construction details or change the scale from something. If you're not quite sure what the final scale should be, make it a scaled drawing. You can always change your mind later as the rest of the uh, documentation or the board layout um, develops. So as always, I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you learned something new in this video. Don't forget to share, subscribe, please, and like this video. And of course, if you want to comment, feel free to. If you do this a different way, if you've never used scale drawings the first time, let me know in the, the comments. Those comments help us because um, our job is to help get you up to speed, train you, and give you the stuff that's relevant to your workflow. So let us know what you think in the comments. And either way, I'll be sure to see you next time.